Right guys, I'm on the bank of the, uh, the famous Essex Syndicate, you all guess what it is, the manor. Um, it's January 2019 um, and it's pretty grim to say the least. Um, thought I'd spend my time having a talk about me fishing over 2018. Uh, a few stories to tell, it was um, quite a good year. Um, I've had since I gave up a couple of my jobs a few years ago, I've had some good seasons over the last three, four years. You know, I've done all right before that, but I was getting a maximum of sort of 20 nights in a year before that. And uh, anyway, um, where do we start? 2018. I think it was in uh, February 2018. I, uh, although it's on my doorstep, I decided to go and have a look around um, Alfix um, day ticket fishery um, in Orsman Den. Um, get Gowdhurst Orsman Den on sort of on the edge there. Um, heard a lot of good things um, about it for a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, he said you know go and check it out and uh, I had a walk around it in, in the February, I think it was the first First or second week in February, somewhere about there. Um, first impressions was what a place. I mean, it's got bins sort of between every two or three swims. Uh, it's well looked after, well run. Uh, plenty of big fish. Um, and considering it's 15 minutes from my house, I couldn't believe that I'd never been up there for a look. Um, anyway, after walk round, you know didn't see any fish top but I see a few bubbles and that and a few of the lakes and uh, it, it looked good and uh, got talking to a guy on, who was fishing on the North Lake that he said for February you know it said it had been quite productive um, so on my way out um, I decided to uh, go in the shop and um, see if there was any places you know I knew it got booked up pretty quick but uh, I know that if you was on your own or maybe two of you you'd, you'd get a chance to uh, Get on, so uh, went in the shop. Sure enough, uh, managed to get me and a, me and a friend of mine on there um, for 48 hours on the 13th of March. Um, for 48, um, and had, by, from having a chat with the guy in the February, I knew that you know the deeper end of the lake, which which isn't that deep, six eight foot, I suppose, in the deepest. Um, I knew that all the fish seemed to be in that area um, in the colder months. So, anyway, March 13th come round, uh, both of us arrived. Um, after a quick walk around, there was three swims, three swims still left in the deep in the deep end at the dam end of the lake. Um, so, uh, I was pretty. You know, it's one or two swims, it's either going to be the corner swim right on the dam or it's going to be the swim next to the island. Um, I looked at where the other guys are situated and the swim near the island seemed to give me a, a, a bit more room um, to spread me three rods about really. Um, that's my mate, um, Andy weren't that sure where he was going, so uh, anyway I decided to get set up. Um, decided to approach it, I decided to fish maggot rigs. Um, because maggots can be productive, uh, fishing small pop-ups tipped with maggots, um, pellets, uh, boily crumb, um, maggots and a little bit of sweet corn in the mix um, and I was only putting out, I suppose I put three rods, three rods out all sort of just going by other waters I fish, centre line of the lake seems to be the one in the winter they seem to follow the straight down the middle of the lake, um, so I put three rods sort of three rod lengths apart, uh, only varied by about half a rod length, about ten, ten and a half wraps I think it was, something like that. Um, and uh, fortunately I got my rods out quite quickly, we turned up at lunch time just after and I got, got I decided on the swim and got my rods out by about half past two. Now that time of year I think it gets dark about five, half past five, somewhere about there, maybe six but I, I mean it was literally I think it was two hours in. No, it was about an hour in when um, I noticed that one guy picked his spot right up 
at the other angles that the lake. Then the guy next to him picked his spoiler up, and then the guy next to me picked his spoiler up, and I thought, yes, I'm in with a chance here, I'm in with a chance of a quick bite. Because with them spotting to my right, there was every chance that I was going to push them left into my water, which was flat. Um, no disturbance, my rods are already in the water, there's no, no disturbance anymore, and uh, sure enough, about two, two, two and a half hours in, finicky, what I thought was a line bite on the right hand rod, just bobbing was twitching up, back down, up, back down, and until it finally tightened up and the rod tip started going round, and uh, yeah, I got my, um, after a short but good battle, I had my first um, Alfix fish, um, lovely scaly fish of. Uh, 36.15 I was over the moon with that I mean one would have been enough but literally as I was taking that fish back down um, to release it I literally got within feet of my uh, rods and my left hand rod was going um, I quickly got the fish out of the um, sling um, got him away and uh, picked up the left hand rod had a really good fight really good battle off this one um, had it on for a good 10 minutes I suppose just ploughing around out there and uh, I was gobsmacked um, next one up on the scales 38-12 um, what a start what a start to a walk I've never fished before unbelievable I was, I was, I was buzzing about that <coughs> a little bit disappointed that I had to get the rods out in the dark but I was, I was absolutely Blown away by uh, my first first ever trip on Alfix, and bearing in mind we was, uh, we was sorry we was only there for 24 hours, sorry not 48, 24 I managed to get us booked on for. Um, and uh, so you know, bearing in mind I still had you know the rest of the night, which is about you know through till about one o'clock the following day, and uh, decided what I was going to do was get the rig, new rigs back on, get the rods back out. Um, and just leave them, leave them until I was going home. And it must have been about up past 11. My mate just walked in to swim. Right hand rods away. Um, and ended the session with an absolute cracker of a fish. Uh, pristine common, 31-2. Um, what, you know, what a first session on Alfix that was, and the fish were absolutely mint. You know, you, you, you know, you, when you're not fit, used to fishing day to get waters, you had bad things about day to get waters and all that. And to be honest with you, you can't fault Alfix. All the fish are well looked after. The mouse are great. Yeah, there's a barbless rule, but that, you know, you use the right rig, then barbless hooks will stay in. It's, you know. Anyway, so that was that, and. Um, uh, let's skip a little, skip a little while. That was March, so yeah. Then we was at April, and it was um, didn't do a lot of fishing on uh, my beloved Park Lake last year, uh, Bardon and Tunbridge. Um, some doors that we didn't didn't do a lot on there last year, but uh, I remember it was my birthday weekend coming up, and it was a Friday evening, um, and. Uh, I decided to go service fishing, lovely evening, lovely evening on the Friday, really hot. Um, and I was due to come on here, you know, one of my first sessions on here, um, on the back of that. So, uh, yeah, went down went down the park, um, started up the shallow end, looking around, didn't see any fish on the top, thought, oh, maybe I've got it wrong, maybe the fish ain't on the top, but when I walked in the deep, in, in, in the bay called the Deep Bay, it was a live fish, there must have been 30 fish out there on the top. But surprisingly enough, I only actually got two feeding within about half hour of trying. Um, and then after about an hour, there's probably four. And in the end, it was so finicky, I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna cast the controller out and just feed a little bit often around it. There was no wind. And uh, I remember just 
flicking the controller out out the back and winding it into the mixers and I barely had a chance to blink and I heard an explosion and it was away and um, it was a fish that I'd, I'd wanted to catch for some years although I caught it years and years ago at 20 pound um, it was uh, a fish called Baby Brown um, and, I, and, and I had it on that particular day at 40 pounds and ounces an absolute beautiful fish chestnut body to it really long almost like an underslung sort of mouth it's, it's this cracking fish absolutely cracking fish um, anyway it was on after that it was on to uh, onto the manor um, yeah I think I'd already done a, I'd already done me first I think I'd done 48 hours my first session on there fish the middle fish the swing called the middle pads but then I went um, turned up on the next session, which broke back in the middle pads because it was busy, that I turned up on the Sunday. Um, no, I didn't. I turned up on the Saturday. Sorry, I turned up on the Saturday, and uh, it was busy. Um, just really waiting for someone to leave. And um, on the Saturday evening, the guys were flicking mixers out on the other side in one of the swims, and uh, after about an hour of trying, they they give up and left, and it was flat calm and just before dark them fish were absolutely troughing them. Uh, I didn't do anything about it at that point. Um, I wanted the fish to stay in the air rather than look one and spook it. Um, so I left it just to see what would happen during the night the following day. Sure enough, the following morning I was looking across at the swim, one head and shoulders, in close, shortly followed by two together and I thought I'm not going to ignore that. I'm going to go around and have a look. Quickly, you know, quickly walked down to the rods, reeled my rods in, um, moved the rods around to the swim, looked, and they were literally within feet of the bank. Feet of the bank. They weren't. They were mudding up, probably within four foot of the bank. Anyway, um, cut a long story short. I shot back round, got all my gear packed up really slowly. Took me about an hour, I suppose, just, just wanting them to build up confidence on whatever they was on in that margin I got round there um, put a couple of uh, although it's quite choddy in that edge I put a couple of um, small uh, chewed up bottom baits on uh, and again just to protect the hook because there's light weed there just really cut the bags, the small bags crushed down and literally just two, two, two out of three rods I put one to the left two foot from the bank one to the right, two foot from the bank, lay the rods on the floor, lines nice and slack, and uh, left all the gear on the barrow, tucked around the bushes right on the top of the bank. Um, and I even left the net slightly up the bank, but um, anyway, I was sitting there with my back against the uh, sleepers there, and um, I was looking at the right hand spot because the fish tend, tend to be moving into that area more than they were anywhere else so I was looking at that spot thinking God, that rod's going to go in a minute, that rod's going to go in a minute then I glanced back at the left hand rod and the tip on the left hand rod was just doing that and bear in mind it's two foot off the bank so I looked into the water and through the water you could see this mirror good fish twisting and turning trying to get rid of the rig so I shot down the bank like lightning picked the rod up, it was on and uh, yeah, what a cracking fish that turned out to be. My first man of fish. Fish of 38 pound. Um, cracking fish. Didn't have a name or anything like that, but another fish that's coming through the ranks. Um, one of many lovely fish in here. And uh, anyway, Bailiff, who, uh, who was in the impads, he, uh, he had a couple of cracking fish while I was there, I believe. I think he had a 20, you know. And a fish called the Bring Com, that was right at 41 pounds, and he, he was due to go um, on the Sunday afternoon. So, knowing that I still had another two nights, I decided to uh, put my rods in there and go in behind him. Anyway, I managed to get the rods out um, before dark. I was happy with the spots I found. Never, obviously, never had fish to swim before. I was happy with the spots I found. I only put one one rod in the spot that I'd noticed that you know it'd been cast into in the reeds. I wanted, I noticed that 
there was movement off the breed so I fished one in open water. Anyway, uh, following morning, um, 10 o'clock, up past 10, left hand rods pulled up tight, run down the bank, pick the rod up, good paddle, long mirror, hardly any scales, lovely fish, 37 and a half, absolute banger. So I was over the moon with that. And um, anyway, um, got that rod back out. I thought, well, you know, I could have done with going to the shop really, but I decided against it. It still looked good for another bite. Um, yeah, and it was the middle rod that had been out there since the afternoon before. I wanted to leave at half past three to go to the shop. Um, so I've come back and get them sorted for the, for the night. Call past three, middle rods away. And I had another, um, like a mosaic scaly mirror, fully scaled, 23, 23 and a quarter. So, I mean, that fish actually ended that session for me. Well, what session it was. Couldn't believe it, you know. Anyway, um, from that session, Quite hectic actually. Uh, over the rest of the year, when I was here, really, I mean. But yeah, the next session, I think, uh, in the May, turned up. I fished mums on the Friday night, but I still had, obviously, Saturday night. I knew that somebody would leave on the Saturday. I didn't, the guy in the, in, in the end swim was going on the Saturday, so I decided uh, I didn't want to go in there, I, that weren't really for me, it was too far down the end, I didn't want to be blocked in on this occasion because the fish seemed to be more out in the open water rather than in the end, so a guy was moving out of the, uh, out the swim, swim over there called the garden, uh, moved in there and it was getting warm by this point, it must have been I was 10, something like that, 11 o'clock. Fish was starting to show on the surface out front. So I flicked some mixers out. Didn't take long. They were up. Boom, boom, boom. Taking them left, right, and centre. And uh, then a the slight breeze picked up. It became quite frustrating because it was pushing all the mixers across the other sides where the other lads were having to try and go on the surface. But I just thought I've got to get a rod out now so I'm going to miss my opportunity and uh, got the rod out, had one cast one at me, cast it back out right at the back of the mixers and um, yeah, boom, the fish come up and took it straight away. Uh, that ended up being a fish called um, Falco's Fish uh, 39.6. Uh, so yeah, what, you know, another absolute cracker from the manor. Um, and then what happened then, yeah, Saturday night came and went, Sunday morning, nothing. Um, I, pa I packed up and uh, one of the guys was floating fishing down the corner. And he had bought our bun, um, nice fish. And uh, he, he, he went shortly after, but I, I had a look and there was fish still there. So pinging out the odd mixer, trying to get them going, weren't having it and I thought, there's every chance I've caught them like it before, just having a single mixer out there on its own. If you get a group of fish come up past it, one of them will take it. And sure enough, fish that haven't been caught for some time, fish called Joe's fish, come up and engulfed it. Um, on the scale, she went 43.6. Um, and uh, yeah, ended up being my first 40 for the manor. Um, and that one, um, later on in the year, seeing what she fell in love with me a bit, I ended up went on to catch her again twice more after that, 42 and 41. Um, but yeah, um, then from that session, I think I managed to get back out um, in the week. I think I got back out in the week that week. I think I had an unexpected day off, just come down for an afternoon's float fishing. And uh, yeah, um, after a few hours of trying, I was lucky enough to get them feeding in, the, in one of the corners. 
and um, ended up having um, the Winter Common 37 and a half and the Black Moth Leather 29 and a quarter. So, um, and like I say, after that, it just it just went mad. I had um, well, I went on to have Baby Stella twice, uh, 38 and 39. Um, I had the pound coin twice, I did it in the summer, then back in December I did it in the summer at 37.15, then in December at 44.14. Um, I had pop rib at £30.5, um, cluster 41.12, baby northern 42.14, um, Stella. You know, stalked out the edge, just one rod, 45. Um, yeah, I incredible. Big common I had in November, um, 45.7, new personal best common it was then. Um, several other 30s and whatever, and then obviously um, the icing on the cake come in December um, when I managed to find a few fish fizzing and within two and a half hours of moving into a swim that's not very popular called the slope I had peach that hadn't been caught since May yeah an all time all time high of 51 12 and a new new personal best mirror for me and first ever 50 um, and again with that I went on to have the pound coin that was when that was 44.14 um, and come back a couple of days later another few nights and managed the 33 and a half stay one um, yeah and another trip another couple of trips actually last year on the back on the park again it was July time um, <clears throat> decided to do a work party and I thought, well, there's no point in, you know, I'm not going to bother setting up, you know, doing the night and all that sort of thing. I just didn't didn't see the point in it, working the work parties and that during the day. It was going to be stinking every time and you need to go home and have a shower and what have you. So, anyway, I decided it all started on the Friday night. just went down there with a the surface gear. I thought, I'll start then, see if we can nail one, you know. Because if the weekend's busy, then I don't get another chance. It, won't, it sort of wouldn't matter. And... Uh, Sure enough, on the Friday evening, really, really struggled to get them feeding. I didn't want to feed until about half an hour before dark. <coughs> and I had one just on dark, um, just cast the controller into where the fish were feeding, and a uh, big explosion I struck, and it was on there. That was a lovely 25 and a half common. <coughs> Next day, we done the work part, and we was done by around about 2 o'clock, something like that. Surface rod in the van, went and got it found a few fish in one of the corners got a real big fish feeding definitely a 40 pounder feeding um, along with another one um, yeah and unfortunately although they both were going for the mix at the same time I, uh, I ended up with, with a 26 pounder but a stunning linear anyway beautiful fish um, yeah and then uh, Sunday come round again busy morning uh, work party um, getting all the line and snags and that on the island all sorted out. Um, got done by about lunchtime though. We really hit it hard that day. We wasn't all sort of feeling it still from the day before. And um, <coughs> didn't bring the surface gear that day. No, it didn't bring it. <coughs> I thought I need a rest after this, you know, two work parties running. I thought, oh, I don't to bother fishing the Sunday. Anyway, we finished the work party and uh, one of the lads smiled and said to me, don't look in the corner. And uh, of course, when someone says that to you, you have to. So uh, I'd look in the corner, sure enough, it was absolutely stacked with fish. Some good ones as well, and uh, that was me. Within half an hour, I'd gone home, got me got me rod, got me surface gear, come back. Um, quickly said hello to the lads on the way past, went into the bay. Wasn't long before I'd got a few fish come up, um, feeding on the mix shortly after flicking them out. But the strange thing about it was, is 
as soon as three or four come up, it seemed to make the others disperse, almost like it was spooking the others. I couldn't believe it at one point, I was probably looking at 40 fish, like stepping stones. I was, and uh, it seemed like the click of your fingers, within minutes, they were, they were moving out the bay. Well, I thought, right, well if a fish does come back now, now's my chance. It's about, uh, about half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that, after uh, being there. And um, the cosmic controller out, wound it into the back of the mixers. Drew it straight in, so it was right in the middle of about 15 20 mixers that I pulled out. And I was just sitting there watching, and all of a sudden, you just see the bow waves turn around and they were coming back. And there looked to be more than the three or four that was feeding originally, there looked to be six or eight of them coming back. <coughs> <coughs> and they come straight back into the back of the mixers. Boom. Boom, pac man they were, and I just noticed my controller move about 10 inches and I struck. And all you see was this big old black tail come out and back in. And, um, well, a battle roar commenced for the next 10 minutes. It had me in and out the weed beds, even though I only had 12 pound mainline on the 10 pound hook link, it had me in and out the big fat weed beds. And, uh, second time it went in though, as soon as it kicked itself out, I wasn't giving in. I just kept her coming, kept her coming, kept her coming, wouldn't let her turn around, wouldn't let her kite. Um, and thankfully she went in the net. And it was a fish I wanted for a long time. A fish called No Name. It was a new PB then, because it was obviously before I had the peach out of the manor. And it was, she went 48-2. Um, what, a, what a fish to have off the top, I mean. Incredible and absolute banger with a nice half moon scout at the beginning of this like half linear line. Beautiful fish, chestnut brown, stunning fish. But yeah, um, <clears throat> just looking back at it as well, a session I had in, uh, another session I had in November. I've been watching this fish on YouTube for, since it got put on there I think it was in April. And that's again in the outfits, um, you know. Lovely common, bit of a mismatch um, on one side, but an absolute cracker, a big rounded body to it, not fat or anything like that, a big rounded long fish. And I, th I think on YouTube it was 41 an ounce or something like that. I just kept staring at fish out, going on YouTube, looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, thinking, God, I'd love to have that one. Anyway, we had it, we was having a, a six man uh, social in November. Um, Yeah, we all got there. Due for swims, and I come out fourth and thought, well, I ain't gonna have much chance here. You know, where I want to get, I ain't gonna have a chance. But luckily, I did. Um, I got my second choice swim, um, and yeah, and it seemed like they visited it because on the first night, um, I'd had three by the following by the first morning. Um, biggest one was 33. That was a mirror. And then I steadily caught throughout the next four days, even though it was hard, because don't get me wrong, I was fishing with five other anglers, all good anglers, um, and it was hard. The fish didn't seem to be visiting their areas, they weren't feeding there or something, and, um, you know, um, I went in, in the end, I went on to have eight, and the icing on the cake come on the final morning. Um, yeah. The eight fish, and when it went in the net, I shouted across. I've only gone and got the one in the video. I couldn't believe it. Um, although she was down in weight, um, I had her at a 38 12. Um, again, like I say, she was usually a 40, but at that I was absolutely over the moon. I mean, I love catching carp no matter what size they are, but when you pick out certain ones and actually manage to get them ones. Really, they really are special moments. Um, there's so many of them special moments in 2018. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. But um, yeah, hopefully, plenty more to come in 2019. Um, all the best on the bank this year, guys. 
Um, if you do want to see the photos, because obviously there's none on this video, because I'm, I just don't know what I'm doing with videos. That's why I've never really done any. Um, just uh, follow me on Facebook, Adam Honeyset, or follow me on Instagram, Adam Carp Honeyset. Um, if you like this video, just like. Um, and by all means subscribe because um, if someone is showing me, I could do a lot more, showing me how to add photos and stuff like that, I could do a lot more videos. But um, anyway, like I say, all the best of 2019, fellas. Thanks for watching.